Hey violinists, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a common problem that I'm seeing amongst my beginner students that is a very simple thing to fix. And this is something that has to do with the right hand and particularly the bow hand. And something that I notice is having the hand move up the bow this way. Now, there are different schools of thought on this. I know that many Baroque players who actually have a modern bow play all the way up here, but this is not the conversation we're having. The conversation we're having is for any beginner violinist who's having trouble with their bow hold and how they continue to keep their hands sliding up. And in today's video, we're going to address that. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Eric and I'm a violinist. I do a lot of violin tutorials and product reviews to help you become a better violinist. And it would mean the world to me if you subscribe, hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It helps this channel to provide more videos for you. The design of the current violin bow in today's world allows us to do many things that bows back into the Baroque era would not allow us to do. In the Baroque era, the bow is constantly trying to articulate the sound at the beginning. And what's different about the Baroque bow and the violin bow is that the current bow that we play on in the 21st century helps us sustain the sound and also have different dynamics. So you may find in Baroque violinists that the violin player tends to hold the bow this way because this is now their new frog. So all of a sudden the bow ends up being way shorter than the original. But in today's video, we're gonna address the common problem that when violin teachers teach you to hold the bow up here, you actually end up creeping up for some odd reason. And I'm gonna share with you some really easy tips for you to think about in your practice so that your fingers and your hand doesn't crawl up the violin bow. And we're gonna go off the assumption that you are learning a Franco-Belgian bow hold. So a Franco-Belgian bow hold consists of a lot of curved fingers with, especially with the thumb and the fingers on the top. So typically when I describe a bow hold, two main fingers are at play here, the pinky and the thumb. The other fingers really rely on the pinky and the thumb to have a curved hand when, when, we're, when we're holding the bow. So for me, I like to hold the bow with the pinky. You see this, this line over here, let me, hold on, let, let me grab a pencil. Go, you have a pencil. So I like to see this edge over here on the violin bow kind of like an invisible line. And this is where I like to keep my pinky because a lot of times some students actually have the opposite problems. They do this, they do all the fingers well, but then they reach for their pinky out this way. This is definitely not what we want because what, what, what you're encouraging is you're actually flattening the, the hand by doing a flat pinky and you're gonna be pressing down on the bow as such. And that's actually another common problem why you may be playing on two strings at the same time. Your teacher might be talking to you about just playing one string at, at once, but you're playing two strings at the same time. This could be an easy fix, is just having this finger go from the, from the metal screw from, from over here to over here. And this is where I like to keep this pinky aligned, at the edge of the bow. This is my favorite spot. And what this does for the violin hand, it kind of helps bring all the fingers to where they need to go. So a couple of a uh, couple of key factors here with the bow, we have um, the wiring, uh, the metal wiring along with the thumb leather. This is for me the most important part because when we have the pinky here, for me in my hand, naturally my hand will come across or my, my index finger will come across as thumb leather. And this thumb leather acts as a grip, as a thumb grip, thumb leather, you know, however you want, however what you want to call it. But for me, I like to keep this index finger really on both the wiring and the thumb leather or the thumb grip, because for me, I like to have that that um that when I'm when I'm pulling the bow, I can actually pull on top of the grip. So this pinky here and this index finger here, that's one option. So let's transition into the thumb. Why the heck do you want to care about the thumb in this situation? Because a thumb actually helps coordinate where the, where the hand is gonna be placed on the bow. So if the thumb tends to travel upward, then as you slowly move up, that, that's what's going to happen. Because you want this thumb in kind of like the, the corner here. You want it in between 
the thumb leather and where the edge of this frog is, the bottom where this curve is. That's for me, my favorite place to put the thumb. I don't wanna put it over here. And actually something that you might see, actually this is really good. Let me, let me show you this because this goes to show that you might want to actually get a bow, um, get the thumb leather changed. You might see that it's very, very tiny. But in this location, I've had this thumb leather for maybe about, I don't know, like two and a half uh, years, three years. So it's definitely worn out a little bit, but you can see that you can, you can finally see that there is a little bit of wiring here. That is from uh, like using my nail and edging that out. And that's something that you actually want to avoid. That's something that I've learned from a, a bow restorer and a violent bow rehair specialist is that you don't you don't ever want to have that thumb leather um, be completely torn out. And a lot of violinists these days they tend to over grip and they tend to squeeze with their thumb. You definitely don't want that. And right now we're talking about the problem of the thumb. Oh, and and I totally did this wrong. Oops. Let me do that again. Okay, all better. So now the hair is in the correct place. <laughs> Not to worry. So how do we combine both elements? How do we combine both the pinky and the thumb? So we want this pinky right where this line is. Now, you might notice from my other videos, I'm actually gonna leave a, a card over here of uh, a common problem that I see with bow holds. And a lot of teachers tend to go this way. They can tend to learn and tend to teach violinists have holding the bow this way. But what happens is that this pinky tends to curve this way because we're because the beginner violence is not used to holding that extra way with the pinky, so it tends to curve this way. If you're gonna be working on your bow hold, I don't recommend doing it horizontally. Do it vertically so that the weight is not horizontal and the pinky is not gonna be curved this much. I see this pretty much all the time exclusively with beginners. Once I have the pinky here, and once I have the thumb in the middle between the thumb, leather, and this edge over here, my entire hand is in good shape. So this will help, especially with the curvy pinky right over here. I always talk about a curvy pinky on this violin channel. And I also talk about a bent thumb because if you have a straight pinky, then you see that my entire hand is pronated really more so to the index finger. And with the thumb, the thumb, if I have a, like a, if I squeeze the thumb this way, then I'm actually causing a lot of tension in the, in the palm of my hand. And I'm actually also, encouraging the pushing of the bow outwards. So to recap, make sure your pinky and your thumb are in the correct place when you're holding the bow as a Franco-Belgian bow hold. Very important that we do that. Because when the pinky is not aligned and it's if it's if it's out here, you're not going to make the bow hold work. If it's too close, you don't want that as well. Imagine this line here, this imaginary line where this pinky kind of goes here. And of course, you don't want the thumb to be moving up because if the thumb moves up, then the entire hand will move up. So you definitely don't want that as well. If you're wanting to learn more about bow grips and bow holds, I'm going to leave some more videos right over here for you to take a look at and watch.